That's a little louder than usual. <coughs> okay. Oh, okay, great. All right. Calling to order the City of Brisbane Parks and Recreation Commission meeting of September 14th at 6.30 p.m. Welcome, everyone. And we'll have a roll call starting from this side. Oh, Commissioner Marmion, present. Fryer, present. Lenz, present. Volagoff, present. Dretz, present. Jimenez present. Okay, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda today? I move that we adopt the agenda. I second. Wonderful. Uh, do we have any changes? I actually have a very small change. Oh. We are going to add, under reports and subcommittees, we're going to add a report from the Public Art um, Commission uh, subcommittee. And this is related to public art in the new library and where we are on the implementation guidelines, kind of how that goes together. So um, can I have a motion with addition or amendment? I move that we uh, approve it with the one addition of the art program. Thank you. A second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then um, if we've had a chance to look at the minutes, we can have a motion to approve those. This is from August 10th. I make a motion we approve them. Great. How about a second? I'll second. Fantastic. Any discussion on those? Any changes or edits? Look good? Yep. Okay, great. We will, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain Aye. since I was not present. Okay, very good. Okay, citizens' communications. We have no citizens today in our audience. Um, old business. Let's start with before school. Um, yeah, before school programming. I guess we, we we could actually we'll have to recuse ourselves from this because we are school related yes. mm -hmm. people. So um, you want to give us a call when you're finished? Yes. Okay. And then Kevin, do you want to? Take over just for the second. Yeah, if there's anything that, okay. that needs to be <laughs> done. <laughs> just wave at us. We'll be peeking. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so this is on the agenda this evening as a follow-up to the resident request to explore the possibility of providing before school care at BES. Um, the subcommittee met, the rec program subcommittee met to discuss this and um, we'll bring it back here to the larger commission to discuss as a whole and decide whether or not um, it, it should be a function of the parks and recreation department or it should be a function of the school district um, and kind of next steps for moving forward so I think if anybody from the subcommittee wants to talk about the discussion that was held um, and then we can talk about what potential next steps should be taken as a follow-up so myself, Teresa, and Lyle all met two weeks ago regarding this. And I think really kind of our consensus was that this was more a function of the school district than the Park and Rec Commission. That being said, I think we also were curious about general need for this from school population standpoint as well as what an estimated cost of this would be just for us to even consider. Because right now it's, it, it appeared that there was a handful of people, not even a handful, I think it was one person, two people maybe, that it requested this information. I don't know, none of us really necessarily knew if it was just specifically for those two or if there was a large call for this. If there was a call for it, exactly what the, the cost of this would be, but 
and I, again, I was only speaking from my own personal experience, but it, in, in my experience with my own child, it's been that the school itself is responsible for that cost, if not the school district. Um, so I think that was pretty much what our takeaway after kicking it around for about a half hour was. I agree. Can I, can I add something? Um, Steve, I believe it was Steve that met with us as well. And he, what he brought to the meeting was also saying that the staff that's available to, to work that those morning hours um, all have small children themselves. So it would put them in the position of needing to find daycare for their own children or enrolling their own children into that daycare program. So that was another factor that, you know, we kind of kicked around as well. Um, I, I seem to recall in, in some previous discussion about this that, that there has been in the past or there was such a program over at Panorama and there was some question whether that was done by the school itself there, or whether that was done by the Daly City Parks and Rec. What, what, there is currently a before school care program at Panorama that is provided by the school district. By the it school is district. staffed by the library aid um, and another teacher. Mm -hmm. um, they share the responsibility a few days a week, but okay. it is a function of the school district. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so where, I guess I'm, I'm chairing here. Uh, where do we go with this then? It, it, it sounds like the results of the subcommittee uh, study was that this was not uh, really something that the Parks and Rec Department wanted to take on. And certainly in the example of what's happening at Panorama, it's not something that Daly City's Parks and Rec uh, mm -hmm. uh, takes on. So are we, w how do we proceed with this? Are we saying it's we've the same considered? School district, right. isn't it? We've considered this and, and we really feel that this is, uh, uh, if, if there's a, a need within the community, that this is something that, that the school district itself uh, well, should I, take I on. Is that, is that our... Our conclusion? I think before we would decide that it's something Park and Rec wants to take on, we'd need a lot more information about enrollment, who would be using it, who would be staffing it, how would it actually come to fruition. Um, whereas it seemed a much simpler thing. Teresa, to, uh, we can't hear you. Oh, it seemed a much simpler thing to see if the school district could take it on because they've already got the staff that might they might just need one or two people to come in an extra hour early, you know, rather than creating a whole new thing through Park and Rec. It might be just easier to implement through the school district. And that also is the model that, that Panorama is using. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I, I don't even think that we necessarily know if the school board itself, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that they probably are aware of this request, but we don't know for certain whether they are or not. Um, but I think our takeaway the conclusion that we made at the very least was pending further information that we were recommending that we think it should go to the school board with us before we really consider it any further and either hear their feedback and, and well not either or hear their feedback and then basically decide whether it's definitively theirs or whether we then discuss it even more so so how do we proceed do, do, does, does the park and rec staff or commission uh, uh, um, reach out to the school board or do we uh, reach out to the community members and say hey look you know the model at Panorama is that it's is that it's uh, done through the school so we recommend that you take this to the school board which which is the avenue we well, want to proceed I would imagine that to the person that brought this up to us we should at least get back to that person yeah we discussed it yeah I don't want to just kind of you know let it right. and then perhaps right. whoever our point of contact is with the school board say this was brought to us we think this is yours take it away right I think what we're looking for is in terms of a next step is a recommendation from the Parks and Recreation Commission about whether or not um, it, it should be something that we tackle as a city as a department or if we believe that it should be the ownership is on the school district and if the ownership is on the school district then we can encourage a conversation a two by two committee conversation between the school district and the city council um, to kind of discuss the the possibility further um, we can encourage residents who bring it up to redirect their request to city council um, who can then be involved with the superintendent and the school district about how to proceed in terms of next steps and whether or not there's enough demand for the program 
my to me that sounds like the most logical course I agree so does this need a motion yes to make it final yeah okay a final recommendation so then I move that it be brought to the attention of the City Council to discuss with the Park and Rec Commission or with I'm sorry with the school board I second that all in favor aye aye, aye. okay, okay. Motion carries. <clears throat> we'll grab Karen and Renee. <laughs> what did I talk about two weeks ago? I know. I can't What's remember what I just talked about. I can't remember what I had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay, so finished with that one. We just just check it off. Okay, so let's go move on to 6B skate park naming process. Next steps. Where are we with that exactly? So that's precisely the question that was asked at the last commission <laughs> meeting, and I'm bringing back an update to you guys. So it was the policy for the naming process was on the city council agenda to be approved and reviewed um, in July. But unfortunately, that meeting ran very long. And um, although the item was agendized, they didn't get to it. So it is on the agenda for the upcoming city council meeting on October 20th at which point they'll review the policy and either adopt it or recommend um, edits and modifications. Okay. From there, um, we, the Parks and Rec Commission subcommittee for facilities will meet with either the City Council Parks and Recreation liaisons or the City Council Infrastructure subcommittee. Um, the council will decide which is more appropriate at the October 20th meeting. Um, and then at that meeting, the conversation will be had about how to solicit recommendations from members of the community to kind of start the process. Okay, that sounds good. Any questions or discussion on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was facilities subcommittee. And um, October 20th, so we will have a meeting before then could we see the memo that they'll receive that has or have we seen it already that the has draft policy the draft policy yeah yeah, yeah. we can include it in next mm -hmm. month's meeting Might if have you want meeting that you were oh that you were absent that could be I don't remember actually reading it so if you all have seen mm -hmm. it then I'll just stop by and I'll take a look at it mm -hmm. I'm we can send it to you yeah okay great thank you what day of the week is the 20th it's, it's a it Thursday night Thursday night. council meeting yeah, maybe I'll go if I can on that day to answer any questions and okay. see what happens. Curious to see. All right, good. Thank you very much, Noreen, for that update. And uh, 6C, Commission Work Plan update. All right. Oh, here it is. Nice. So um, a couple of subcommittees mm -hmm. met rec facilities and rec programs, and they tackled um, addressing some of the work plan and adding in um, more strategies and tasks and action items so I thought today I think we're in a pretty good place with the work plan um, and I thought today we could kind of walk through uh, from a larger broader um, perspective and make any edits um, as we see fit and then as we move forward with the work plan staff can start tackling some of these items and prioritizing so i think what I'll, what we'll do is we'll just go through each individual goal and talk about the strategies and the action items that have been outlined and then if the commission has any suggestions for uh, modifications we can do that as we go that sounds good okay so the first one is um, our first goal is trail improvements and the strategies that were discussed under that goal incre include increased use of trails and we talked about creating a map of accessible trails and working with the bike pedestrian trails master plan committee on um, creating something like that and I'm happy to say I was in a meeting for that this week and it's moving right along so um, it's in progress there. We also talked about trail ma maintenance, um, conducting a formal audit, which staff does on a regular basis, collaborating with Public Works regarding maintaining the use of the trails and removal of debris as needed, um, and then possibly creating some additional signage. 
The next strategy was accessibility and inclusivity. And we talked about paving a portion of the Crocker Park Trail. Um, that was actually part of the conversation that was had this week in the bike ped trails master plan meeting. Um, looking at quotes for paving and then making a recommendation to city council, although I believe it will be part of the, the master plan mm -hmm. committee. Improved lighting, so kind of doing an assessment of the needs for lighting and gathering quotes, making a recommendation to council for that purchase. Connectivity to the ridge, um, again, I think this will be part of the outcomes from the bike ped trails master committee. Um, engaging residents about the best way to achieve that if we wanted to do a survey of some sort. And then the Crocker Trail Tunnel, conducting a conversation regarding the needs of the space and engaging the residents in that conversation. So, pretty thoughtful, extensive. If I may, through the chair, the lighting, is that still on Quarry Road or are you looking at other areas or trails? I don't know who's on the facilities subcommittee. That might have been part of that conversation yeah, initially. We, I believe yeah. it was Quarry Road. Just Quarry Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can add that. Mm -hmm. As I know, that was one of our um, wish lists mm -hmm. for quite a while, doing that on Quarry. Any other changes or other ideas for trails? Uh, uh, yeah, just through the chair, th these conversations will originate in which subcommittee? Regarding trails? Yes. Recreation facilities. Recreation facilities, okay. Mm -hmm. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and this will be a living document. It's something that we'll continue to update as we accomplish some of the tasks, and we can, you guys can choose to edit as as we move along. We'll move on to the next one. Community space for recreation, and this was primarily um, recreation facilities subcommittee as well. Mm -hmm. um, there was conversation about. Um, bocce ball courts located near the community park. They talked about um, assessing the overall needs of the community as it pertains to recreation, possibly doing a needs assessment survey, um, having a conversation about how to utilize the former teen center space and improvements or changes to the after school program modular. Um, they talked about making a recommendation regarding the future use of the former library space and acknowledged that this is something that's, you know, much further down the road, but that there were things that we could do in the meantime to kind of get the ball rolling as the library um, construction process begins over the next few years. And then just overall maintaining high, low, high quality facilities and conducting regular audits um, and making recommendations to city council regarding facility improvements as you guys did last mm -hmm. year with Mission Blue. Looks good. Um, for the after school program modular, there was um, a question of some roof damage. Do we know if what the update was on that or if there's an update on that? Um, it was inspected. There was some sort of damage that was calling into question whether it would need to be either repaired or the modular would possibly need to be replaced. I don't know what the extent of the damage was. Just in the last, in, in the last few weeks recently, or mm -hmm. was that? Yeah, so we had some water damage on the, in the flooring. It was in the flooring. Of the modular, okay. yeah. Okay, okay, good. And so we've um, worked with some contractors to get quotes for the work to be done, okay. and um, we'll move forward with that to have the problem remedied in the meantime so that okay, it doesn't good. become more of a hazard. Okay, so it was just a small issue and something easily fixed. Yeah, water damage from the sink, I believe. It was oh, okay. a leaky sink, and so some mm -hmm. of the floorboards Interior. have to be pulled out and some of the flooring has to be replaced. So. Okay, okay, yeah. good, thank you. I think that's uh, everything that we talked about, isn't it, mm -hmm. on our, in our subcommittee, yes. so that looks good. Okay, and the next goal was innovation, and I think this was a conversation had mostly with rec programs 
but you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think most of this kind of ties back to what we said within community space, where creating some type of a survey that would be open for all residents to take um, to give some direction as to where there's interest, because otherwise we're just creating ideas in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know. I mean, maybe everybody wants a bocce ball court. Maybe nobody does. Maybe every, half of I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But this, in a similar fashion, as we're saying, new community events, if we come up with a list of 10, 15, say, rank them, mm -hmm. write in others that you believe, because that at least that way we have feedback mm -hmm. more so than what we're getting by just kind of trying to develop ideas on our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so that would be a great next step for a lot of these items, new classes, new events. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Yeah, we talked a lot. We talked a lot about um, the first the first point here, um, creating pop up recreational opportunities, mm -hmm. which kind of a new thing. Sounds really fun and exciting, but it it would be interesting to know what the community feels, what kind of pop-ups they'd like to Absolutely. see. Absolutely, yeah. And that's definitely something we could include on the survey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think people would enjoy taking a survey in this area. It would be, <laughs> I think, fun to hear their ideas well, and it's, it's easy to something very positive and To create a survey fun. monkey and just basically let people know through the mm -hmm. monthly newsletter that it's mm -hmm. coming or whatever it might be. Give mm -hmm. yep. Everybody has some type of unique code that's created so they're not just flooding it. But mm -hmm. regardless, I mean, I'm clearly based on the Facebook page, is not a, I don't think people are shy or aren't mm -hmm. shy or are shy about expressing their opinion <laughs> and their interest. So, yes. yeah, I, I would just like to know where, what they want, what mm -hmm. they want. Mm -hmm. What I want might be different than everybody else. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. interesting to know. Okay, that looks good. All right. And the next one was teen services, and I think most of this came out of the rec programs subcommittee. Um, we talked about revival of the youth advisory committee, um, establishing in-town opportunities for teens by hosting band nights at the community center, offering life skills workshops, identifying volunteer opportunities for them. Um, at the upcoming Day in the Park event, we have a teen designated area. Um, continuing to work with the library to co-host teen events. We've done some of that already um, and refreshing our existing teen dances to encourage more participation. And then partnering with surrounding communities so that we can have more robust programming made available for the teens in Brisbane. And then creating a pipeline for employment by possibly hosting a job fair at Mission Blue, a teen hackathon, offering a summer counselor and training program for the younger teens. Some really great ideas there. What's a hackathon? Code. Oh, okay. coding. Yeah. Writing code. Okay. Mm. I had no idea. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was the only one that didn't know. <laughs> At first I was thinking, is that hacky sacks? <laughs> yeah, that's showing my age. Okay, let's see. That looks good. Okay. Mm. And the last goal was town connectivity. And I, there's some overlap with the trails here, um, but encouraging more connectivity between the Ridge and Central Brisbane, developing Crocker Trail, establishing a partnership with Homeowners Association to market more in-town activities and events, um, getting more involved with the local business community, working with the Chamber of Commerce, marketing to the local business community, um, encouraging more event co-sponsorships, engaging outlying neighborhoods, consider marketing to them as well and identifying other partnership opportunities and tying into the marina a little bit more, um, possibly including a survey and maybe this could be part of the survey we previously mm -hmm. discussed about what people would like to see and partake in out at the marina um, and possibly hosting an annual event out there. I know that was something that was done in the past, and mm -hmm. there's some interest in bringing a similar event back. Yes, definitely. Uh, through the chair, um, this developed Crocker Trail, and I know that overlaps with, uh, with the trail improvements. Um, I just had a, a, a question about it and wanted to maybe have a little conversation. I am the liaison person for the use of the 280 oh, South yes. Hill sale proceeds. 
which I think at the last meeting, I believe I asked, is that still all, uh, you know, happening? And I got a prompt re reply from Stuart that yes, indeed, it is, it just hasn't met. And, and this is proceeds from sale and there are, are several um, uh, interests in what we do with that. Uh, sometime, a long time ago, we talked about those funds as being part of what might be used uh, to to develop Crocker Trail, uh, and I think tr uh, Crocker Trail is really a key um, uh, recreation facility that helps to uh, uh, connect uh, residents from the ridge to to Central Brisbane. In that, it is a facility that's walkable from both from both sides of uh, of those two communities. Uh, so th the question is, I, I guess, a general uh, conversation is this use of two of the 280 South Hill sale proceeds, if and when that meeting does come, and I am advocating on behalf of, of the interests of the Parks and Rec Commission, is that indeed what, what we are talking about? And is, is this a, a good time to maybe have just a, a little bit of conversation about that? Because when that meeting does happen, uh, I would really be trying to represent the interests of, of, of our general thinking. Um, I think it fits in. It's not we haven't agendized it, but it seems to fit in nicely to the work plan. So I think we can discuss it. Sure. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any thoughts? I tend to uh, agree. I think that because the sale was done at 280 South Hill, it seems appropriate to use use those funds and um, you know to, with upgrades and updates to this trail uh, for connectivity and just for walkability. So um, I agree with that. Yeah. If, if I remember too, <clears throat> we were also thinking part of the trails master plan too, to extend some part of Crocker and make other connecting trails that would go off of it into other areas and up to the mountain. I remember that that was one part mm -hmm. of the discussion too. To extend that and make it more connected to the other trails. But that would have to do with the uh, master mm -hmm. trails plan. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought they were kind of both kind of together because with the money and then the trails plan. Yeah. Now, o Open Space will have some some proposals for these mm -hmm. funds as well, which which may well be very very legitimate uh, 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 pulls on the on those on those funds. Uh, so that's the conversation that that I need to be mm -hmm. need to be prepared. Uh, for, but uh, but a little early in this presentation, we were talking about uh, uh, paving the Crocker Trail with bike trails, for example. Well, that's that's going to cost a bit of money. Mm -hmm. Is is that is that money identified separate from this uh, these uh, 280 South Hill proceeds? Um, and I guess I guess I will eventually need some guidance when I go into that meeting uh, to to what it is that we want to to advocate for and it may also be and I walk that that Crocker Trail uh, quite regularly uh, and and I've been giving it some thought there also may be some some improvements to that trail that that um, that coincide with the interests of open space uh, uh, meadows and things that could be made more accessible or things mm. like that so Maybe there's a larger conversation we ha should have down the road, but I, I just wanted to kind of get that out there because if that meeting gets gets scheduled in December and I don't, we haven't had a, a good conversation about it, mm -hmm. I won't know how to go into it and, and, and how to advocate for our interests. Right, because the those the cost of paving is so much higher. It, would, it wouldn't even be a portion. It would be just be a portion of paving. Right. So we'd almost have to think of different uses that would work within those the parameters of those right on so um hmm, any thoughts about this it could also be something that we put on the agenda for next month's meeting and then can encourage a larger conversation about it and then that way if anybody from the public wants to come and speak on behalf of it they could mm. do so hmm. do we already have money in the budget for trail improvements the the money th I believe that has been rolled over is ten thousand dollars for trail improvement specifically. Much. Okay. Right. And and this this funds this two eighty South Hill proceeds it was originally something like three hundred thousand dollars. I think from the response I got from Stuart maybe some of that has been tapped into, but it still is 
a significant amount. Now, I don't, I don't know what it costs to put bike trail all the way around that loop, but I have a feeling that three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars doesn't, doesn't do it. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. two mile loop or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, but maybe it would be something for us to have a, a broader conversation to agendize it, uh, invite members of the public, uh, just so that when I go into this meeting, I'm I'm fully informed about about the direction that everybody wants me to take. It would probably pay for the lighting. Huh. Well, you know, yeah. I don't know how expensive that is. Yeah, but that's uh, not on Crocker Trail. Oh, it isn't. No, that's oh, on the. Was. That's on. Uh, Quarry Road. Oh, Quarry Road. Or, oh, okay. Quarry Road. Okay. And and you know we could we could in that conversation advocate for something entirely different than the Crocker Trail, but uh, but I do think that uh, the Crocker Trail comes up and it is a really, you know, over the long term, if it's developed, it would be a really good recreational facility to help uh, 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 connect uh, Central Brisbane to the Ridge. So you're thinking that that meeting could possibly be at the end of the year, so December? I have no we, idea when it will be called. It could yet. be a year from now. Okay. But, uh, but, you know, if I get an email that says, you know, three weeks from now mm -hmm. and I'm not prepared, mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe it's something that, uh, that we could have a, a, a conversation about, and then we could uh, up that 0% to 50% on this uh, mission <laughs> work plan. Did, That's true. Good. <laughs> if I may, did, the, did Stuart tell you what the holdup is? Because that's... A, that cell went like about a year ago, didn't it? No. Yeah. No, he just said he, he was very prompt in his reply cause, because I inquired about it, and he said, yes, it's still on, but uh, I don't know when the meeting yeah, will happen. That's, it's yeah. maybe not reached the top of anyone's agenda yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. <clears throat> I, I will add that the um, next meeting for the Bike, Pedestrian, Trails Master Planning Group um, will be held on October 13th, and Lyle is part of the group that will be attending that mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that he'll have some more information to share with the committee about where that master plan is and how that might play into some of the conversation that we're having um, about trails as a commission. Mm -hmm. So, yes, but I, th I think our next meeting is October 12th. Yeah. So it's the day after. The day after. Mm. So it might, I, I don't, the commission can decide whether or not it, we want to have it on the agenda for our October 12th meeting or if they want to defer it to November when Lyle will likely have some more information he can share. And that November meeting I think is on the second. 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 So mm -hmm. that's been moved up. Do you think, would you want to wait until then? I'm fine. You know, there, it's, it's not urgent, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I do think we should have that conversation. Okay. Mm. Well, I think it would be helpful to have more information about the pedestrian master plan. And mm -hmm. so why don't we put it on the on November? November 2nd yeah. agenda. I think that'd be perfect. Okay. Okay, great, excellent. So back to the work plan. So we're finishing up with town connectivity. Any other comments here? I'm glad we're still thinking about the marina. We'll get something going at the mm -hmm. marina yet, huh? Um, I was uh, at our facility meeting. I told Karen I was out at the marina a couple Sundays ago, and the Corvette Club was having a, a gathering out there. It was really rather nice. They had a um, barbecue, and then they had all their little canopies out. It was Sunday, and it was a really nice sunny day. And they had a little band playing. It was a lot of nice activity on the green there. Hmm. And then farther down the way, there was another family having a big barbecue. And I sat in between both of them, and really, you could not hear the band play that did not interfere with hmm. the people picnicking. And it was really nice seeing all that activity. And then a lot of people were walking and riding their bikes, and the fishermen down the, on the pier. It was it was a lot of activity. I hadn't been in the marina in a long time, so that was nice to see. Mm -hmm. I walk every week, and there's a lot of yeah. family get-togethers and parties. There was a wedding a few weeks ago. Mm, nice. Yeah. So a lot of activity on that. Yeah, it's really nice. Because nice this last see. Saturday there were two different groups mm. out there. So it does get a lot of activity, yeah, surprisingly. So we need to do something out there again. Yes. I think so too. Good idea. Good. So it's on our work plan. So we'll continue discussion about that. That sounds good. Let's see, Marina. Checking Marina. Do we roll Marina into facilities? 
uh, in subcommittees? I don't see it here. No, remember they took that off because they took oh, it Ted, off. Ted, right. no, not Ted, has Randy, ran, yeah. isn't he in charge yeah, of it now? Yeah. So they kind of took it away from us. That's right. That's not ours right. anymore. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. But we can still have it on here under events and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, planning. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Are we missing anything here? Does anyone have anything to add? I like the becoming more involved with the local business community. I think that that's something we definitely need to do. Happy to see that on there. It looks good to me. Excellent. Well, thank you for the update and sure. for everyone's work in subcommittee and putting this together. I think it's it's just wonderful to have a work plan <laughs> to be able to to refer back to it and see how we're doing and maybe um, every three months or so we can revisit it and and kind of see, uh, check our progress and what we need to be doing. So yeah, thank you so much for putting it together. Sure. All right, so next is new business. We do not have any new business today. Item 8A, Chairperson. Uh, reports, let's see. I went to the presentation at the community center um, from the by the architects Siegel and Strain that are uh, designing our new library and it's fantastic design really excited about that and I think really um, incorporated the visions and ideas and values of the people in our town um, so I was very pleased to see that and happy to see the teen programming space is still there with our maker space and I think we'll have a lot of exciting programs and I like the way the community room opens up and incorporates that space uh, so we'll be able to think uh, do some very effective programming with the library so the space is there so I'm excited about that I also like the way the the uh, open space in the middle which is kind of like the outdoor room is incorporated can be incorporated into that community space so we can have larger events and people can be in and out uh, very inspired excellent design so happy to see that let's see um, that's all I have and why don't we go right into the subcommittees so we'll start with day in the park upcoming event preparations that is around the corner mm. Yes, it's not very far off. I know. We met again, and I think we have it finalized. Uh, uh, the the zip line is done. We're going to have that, and we're going to have a dog costume parade, and we're going to have a pie eating contest, and what else, Teresa? Um. All of the community and vendor booths are moved on, out onto the street. The park is going to be open for picnicking um, with a live band. Uh, we're going to have a wine and beer garden. And how are we doing with more food vendors? I know that the last communication from you was that we were still working on that. So we submitted our permit to the county health department a couple of weeks ago with the existing vendors that we had, which included the Lions Club, the Eagles, and um, Ken Walker's Brisbane Youth Sports. Um, and then we have a, currently a couple of food trucks that are interested in coming out to the event, a Cajun food truck and a Japanese food truck. Mm. Oh, that'd be fun. And nice. then the beer and wine. Mm. So. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have the teen area scheduled as well, which will be over in the um, the skate park area. And I think we're going to have a karaoke machine over there for any teens that might want to get up and do a little performing or karaoke, doing any karaoke. About that, Teresa, are they going, to, are, is that going to be program time as far as slotting in different teens to do performances? Or is it going to just be kind of open, open mic kind of thing and well, we'll come and go? I contacted some teens who I know um, sing or perform or are in bands and such, and we didn't weren't able to find anyone who really committed mm. to wanting to go down there and take a slot. Mm. But I know Ricardo's working on it, and um, I've referred people to contact him, and I don't don't yeah. know if that's been happening. I think we've I mean, the DJ that we're going to have there has the capability to do karaoke, and other people can mm. perform. Uh, 
perform by plugging into his sound. Okay. So I think we've left it deliberately open so mm -hmm. that hopefully, we, you know, we've, we've tried to encourage teens to come out and perform. And even if they just want to plug in and play one song, um, we have that capability. Mm. So. Now, how about um, how will we announce the details of the dog parade and the contest, the pie eating contest, and the the time slots and and more description about that? How is that? We'll have a sound system, won't we? Yes. A um, specific schedule of all those events. Yes. Time already, right? There is a schedule. We've been promoting through our social media outlets. Um, we created the this water bill program that will be accessible through the city website and the weekly city blast as well as our social media sites on the back is a schedule of events for the entire day um, and then we'll have a lot of signage on the day of the event and we'll have we'll be passing these out to event Great. goers so that they can have something in their hand as a guide to the event and we did a um, insert in the water bill Oh, that got mailed to every residence in Menlo Park that had, not Menlo Park, Brisbane, that had um, kind of what's happening, what to expect on the day of. And, Great. Um, yeah. And Wonderful. The, and everyone's favorite, the sign in front of town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. Well, it's very exciting. It sounds like so much more than we've ever done. Yes. And, and the zip line is going to be where? on San Francisco where the food vendors have been in the past. So it will be below the Derby, mm. but before the fire trucks. Okay, yeah, oh, good. that's a good location. Yes. I think that'll... There's no obstructions right. from trees mm -hmm. or power right. lines and Excellent. it's 250 feet in length. So we needed a very straight, um, clear area to do so. And that was the most ideal location. Wonderful, and it'll be very visible. So yes. people know it's there and not tucked away. So yeah, excellent. It'll be good. Yeah, thank you to our subcommittee for all the hard work because mm -hmm. I think it's going to be quite a day. It's Noreen. <laughs> She's um, done all the work. <clears throat> thank you. We have ideas. You guys have wonderful ideas. <laughs> 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 and we'll have a, a photo booth as well, so people will be able mm -hmm. to take photos of, yes. of their day. And yes. there will be some, some different uh, offerings, <clears throat> so it will be fun. And a dunk tank. Oh, a mm. dunk tank with local... Favorites. I hear Cliff is going in. <laughs> and well, uh, he, he hopes not to go in. <laughs> <laughs> we have police officers and oh. other individuals that are lined up to be dunked. So oh, that'll be so be very Now, is that one a fundraiser? <laughs> that is, it, it, it's being provided by Silver Spot. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, yes. Do we know what other activities are going to be in the teen center area yet? Has we, it been finalized? we have the DJ, we have the jousting, and then we have an extreme tug of war. Okay. <laughs> jousting. Yes. I'd love to see that. Mm -hmm. Great. That sounds like fun. Okay. So that is anything else about Day in the Park? Looking forward to that. Yep. 30 years. We will be able to report on that next meeting. So that'll be good. All right, recreation programs, work plan, and before school programming. I think we covered all that. I think we I did. Think we did yeah. too. So we talked about that in our work plan. And then um, I did have a citizen ask me about some specific wish list items. I thought I'd just share it with you guys and just throw it in the mix. Um, girls softball. I don't think we have, do we have girls softball? No. Girls softball. Parent-child dance. I guess they do this in other mm -hmm. uh, cities, and that's quite popular. Uh, and the last one was um, I had a few people ask me about piano or some type of music classes. Mm -hmm. So, and I think again that goes back to having a survey that goes out. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect type of feedback that mm -hmm. we need. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. All right. Good. Recreation facilities. Would you like to well, talk about, um, uh, so we talked about work plan pretty much. Yeah, and Noreen pretty much hit it on the nail with that um, through the whole work plan. Uh, the one thing we probably talked about was the Pinata policy at the community park. And I'm trying to recall now because that we met right after I got back. In August, um, I thought we kind of uh, we talked about possibly putting a poll up 
and doing it that, but we didn't know if that would be feasible because people might walk into this pole and so forth. And the only place that people are really putting this up at is in the gazebo. And the one concern was that when that uh, citizen came in about chocolate being left behind. So we talked about, well, how many pinatas are really down there a lot and the, when the place is being rented? And is it more of a cleanup area than actually, you know, what's happening with the pinatas? Because they really aren't damaging any trees. I don't think anybody's really putting them there. It's just in the gazebo. Mm -hmm. So we talked about <laughs> we need to have a better uh, policy of uh, cleaning up after oneself because usually it, we haven't had that many complaints really about pinatas. No. So I yeah, think really, you're right, Renee. It was really about cleaning up yeah. after use, and that just falls under general yeah. cleanup for yeah. parties. Yeah. So we we're going to bring it back to see further what the commissioners think about this. Because since that citizen came in, really we haven't had any other complaints. And have you had um, people renting the place specifically asking for uh, where do we put pinatas? So after your meeting, Lyle came to me to see if I could, at some point, if you guys wanted to come back and um, figure out like how often do we do parties with pinatas and just honestly off the top of my head without doing any real research because I do them all, all day long I'd say I want to say at least half of the parties that we do do pinatas mm -hmm. they're there if there's a kids party is even if there's a bounce house especially if there's not a bounce house there's always a pinata mm -hmm. it's still a big thing it's going to be probably that way for ever but yeah, so at least half of our rentals have pinatas. And the pinatas are hung in the gazebo alone, or are there other places, other ways that they do it? So that I don't know. All we've ever asked for in our packets, we have a little um, in the policy, we have do not hang things on the trees, um, especially the baby trees when they were first um, put in. So I don't really, I would assume because I've been to parties where friends have had pinatas and they always try to do it in an area such as the gazebo where there's a wooden, because they pull, instead of hanging it now, there's a whole pulley thing that they do. Mm -hmm. They put it up there and they pull up and down mm -hmm. and it's not just so much just hanging there. So I don't think too many people use the trees. I never get any complaints yeah. from Anybody. And the other part of the equation, and I was, I remember the meeting where the citizen came in and, and explained to us the, the difficulties they were having. Uh, the other part of the equation is, is dog owners, and what are the rules for dog owners in the community park? Uh, they're supposed to be on leash? Yes. And so, so there's some, I mean, the, Control. The, 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 the issue is if a dog scarfs up some chocolate that's been left behind and that's and that's poisonous to, to to animals but there is some some control over the the, the pet owners and mm -hmm. because they're supposed to be unleashed is that is that correct the city ordinance mm -hmm. yes yeah and I would think that it just it's more about cleanup because mm -hmm. whether it's chocolate or whether it's confetti or whether it's whatever comes out of the thing I mean that's that's my bigger concern yeah not that I'm going to be walking my dog through there, and it's going to come piece of, or eat a piece of chocolate, to your point. It's on me to see yeah. what it's doing. Mm -hmm. But I worry that the thing's busted open. Let's face it, we have a lot of wind in Brisbane. If it's filled with confetti, that blows everything. That becomes more of an environmental hazard than anything else. So that's my concern more than is a dog going to eat a piece of chocolate out of a pinata. I mean, that's kind of such a small fraction of, of what the possibilities are of, of that situation. As long as I've been here, that's the first complaint I've ever heard about pinatas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what we talked about, the cleanup. And then also in the um, agreement that they sign, we said, well, maybe we should list party props, you know, and kind of restructure some of uh, the agreement 
what are you going to be using? And has anybody <laughs> ever left a rope up in the gazebo? I mean, they when they that's what they've usually cleaned up and taken everything. I think it maybe it might have just been that one time, and who knows maybe what have happened. Maybe somebody was smashing the chocolate candy bars on the, the ground, and that's what they were sticking to the pavement, and mm -hmm. that citizen that came in had that issue at that. Sorry. Yeah. I like the idea of the pinata activity happening in the gazebo area because yeah. it is because you know it's a solid mm -hmm. ground um if there are if there is candy on the floor it's going to be seen and picked up for the most mm -hmm. part unless you have some kids who are going to decide mm -hmm. to smash it into the pavement which mm -hmm. you know kids are kids mm -hmm. but you know in the grass there's it's more likely to get lost mm -hmm. and and left there um but if the gazebo is being used i mean is it, it's rented separately sometimes so if the gazebo's in use then it kind of then where does it happen I, I would just say clean up your mess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it would seem to me that had mm -hmm. there not been a confrontation after that, he probably, the person, the resident probably would not have come in here to complain about it. Mm -hmm. Probably would have been, oh, I found a piece of chocolate, told the guy to clean it up, he cleaned it up, and that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. Instead, there was a confrontation. That mm -hmm. was more the issue, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that and was I, my impression of it as well. Mm -hmm. I think we've had, you know, a broader issue of cleanup in the park after mm -hmm. the parties on the weekend anyway, and this is sure. just really a part of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah, I agree. But, yes, you know, there's did been a lot of overflowing garbage and, you know, people showing up on the, the following day on Sunday or on Monday. And, mm -hmm. you know, and we did put out more Right, right. Trash bins. So oh. I, I mean, I have no objection to have pinatas in the park. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't either. And I and I agree. I was going to bring up the same comment that Kevin did. That you know, dogs are supposed to be leashed down at mm -hmm. the park. It's the owner's responsibility to make sure that their pet isn't picking up trash and eating it for the most mm -hmm. part. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. being aware. Mm-hmm. So maybe we could just kind of uh, take another look at the cleanup portion of mm -hmm. the contract and make sure it's clear and um, keep an ear out mm -hmm. for anything else that comes up. But I think with the increased mm -hmm. amount of um, receptacles we added fairly mm -hmm. recently, right. that should address a lot of the problems. Mm -hmm. So I think we might be all right for now. Okay, great. Okay, so um, public art. Kevin, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so I wanted to give a little update on the on the public arts uh, uh, ordinance and the uh, implementation guidelines. We have not met since our last meeting um, to continue our work on the public uh, arts implementation guidelines, although we have a meeting scheduled for uh, two weeks from now. And I would say we're two-thirds of the way finished with that um, with that working draft, at which point then we'll bring it to you. So it's another two meetings maybe maybe more um, but we are taking our time and, and, and being very careful to do it uh, thoroughly at meantime uh, the public arts ordinance <clears throat> is is being triggered by various uh, uh, projects um, and the most recent one uh, that's uh, that it has triggered is the new library the new library will have a public arts uh, component and we are in that situation uh, sort of in limbo of how do we uh, how do we decide about public art for the new library uh, without implementation guidelines now on the one hand going through this this process helps us in our subcommittee to inform us as we make Im implementation guidelines because we've got a case in point uh, to look at there was a uh, an ad hoc committee that uh, met three weeks ago, I'm thinking maybe, uh, which included uh, two members of uh, the city council, um, uh, Madison and uh, Davis and um, Lori Liu, myself, and, um, and sorry, I'm spacing, Bonnie, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, and, uh, and so this conversation came up, and uh, um, my point was that what we don't want to have happen with the public arts uh, uh, component is that it is a last minute thought. Uh, the idea of, of implementation guidelines and the public arts ordinance is that public art should be an integral part of the, pub, of the, uh, the uh, planning process and, um, uh, and we should have an artist on board 
fairly early. Uh, so that was my contribution to that. Uh, of course, ultimately, the, the, the decision about public art for this will be in the hands of the City Council. Uh, so that's the report on that uh, today. Thank you. Very good. Okay, so that is it for, were there any other subcommittees that met that weren't on the list? I think we got them all. Okay. We'll move on to Commissioner Reports. Um, I would like to remind everyone that Saturday is the Lagoon Cleanup. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And it starts at 9 o'clock out at, uh, I guess it's Fishman's Park, it's called. Okay. And the other thing I would want to discuss is previously when there had been a Volunteer of the Year, the whole commission discussed it in private session. This time, I understand two commissioners and two city council people decided, and I was wondering why it was changed. I don't have the answer to that at the moment, but I didn't we do it that way last year? Yes, we did. Okay. And they changed it this year. So this, it's the same as it was last year, though, right? No. Oh, I thought that they... It's did. already decided. Yeah, I don't have the answer. That would be a Stuart I do know Stuart that question. there was um, a council member who wanted to have the council more involved in that decision. So before we would make the recommendation... I thought we made a recommendation and it went to the council. Mm -hmm. It was in the past that way. That's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, it seems like a lot of us were left out of the planning stages or vote of who we think or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was wrong. I think Teresa agrees with me. Well, yeah, in the past, we, we did all discuss it. And then, but I think, wasn't it last year we did have all a of few, us. It was, was it all of us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did all. We did. We discussed we did. It as a group. As and a group, agreed but, on. Uh, but I remember there was somebody there at the city council because there was something that happened a couple of years ago, and a city council person did not like the person that we picked mm -hmm. for for volunteer of the year, and that's what kind of started. I that's yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do believe last year I do remember it starting with a discussion yeah. through through us. commission, but they eventually ended up. Doing the two and two. two. I think that's what did happen. Is that going to be from now on? That would be a question. I, yeah, yeah I, we can, had I can follow up with, Stu yeah. with Stuart on how, identifying what the process will look like in the mm -hmm. future just so that the, com the entire commission is aware and if it's something that we need to hold in a private session before that's one what of we our commission do. meetings, mm -hmm. then maybe we can just have it as a, like a standing placeholder mm -hmm. on that month's calendar yeah. um, if that's <laughs> what the process is going to be. Yes. So. Yeah, I, I would just add to that because <clears throat> that was also discussed in this ad hoc uh, a committee where we where we discussed uh, public art. And now that I reflect on it, I was really the only representative from the Parks and Rec Commission for various circumstances who was part of that conversation. And that well, and that would seem like now it's been taken out of the hands of the Parks and Rec Commission. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. For for whatever reason, there would the way it was structured, there would have been more people, but as it turned out, it was just me, and that, uh, and, and two city council members, so. How I understood the, that it was to go was it was supposed to be the chair and the vice chair of the Parks and Rec Commission, uh, as well as the two city council parks and recreation liaisons. So that's who was invited to the I meeting, see. but I, Karen was unfortunately unable to attend. I see. So perhaps the step we were missing was the meeting, the closed right. session meeting of right. the commission. Right. For a to discuss it first. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for two of our members to then go forth and right. Yes, and yeah. but we discuss it first. Mm -hmm. And we have a suggestion who we'd like. I mean, we vote on it, yeah. who yeah. we'd like. And then it could go to the meeting of the two commissioners mm -hmm. and the two city council. Yes, yes. But at least we had a chance to voice our opinions. Yes. And we had some city or citizen input too yes yes, yes. we received yeah. we got nominations yes. people mm -hmm. nominated people 
So, so to be clear, is is what happened this year that there was a, a step that was skipped? Yes. Yeah. Or we didn't discuss anything. No. The commission didn't. We didn't. I think. Or so. maybe you guys did while I was I kept gone during the summer. When they talked about revealing at the a day in the park, I says, "But we have to meet first. And she goes, "Oh, it's done." Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I was just really amazed that it was done without the input of all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think. Yeah. And yeah. letters from people no yeah. nominating someone, because mm -hmm. we've always had that previously. Mm -hmm. We did have several letters. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we did. We accepted nomination. This year? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. There was information yes. at that meeting about, about public input. Uh, and we, this being the first year that I've been in that loop. Uh, I didn't think anything of it until now, until yeah. actually until now that, that, that you bring it up. Mm. So it would seem that, that there was a, just the, a, a step that was skipped. It sounds mm. like it might, okay. so then might be the case. Next so year we, we can, can follow up and f identify what that process will look, is supposed to look like mm -hmm. to make sure that if it is indeed we're ha supposed to have a closed session with the entire commission that we make sure that that doesn't mm. right. get missed again next year. That sounds Thank good. You. We can put that on our yearly commission calendar yes. just to make sure we yes. put that on the work paper, the work plan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Karen, um, you skipped setting up subcommittee meetings. I did. Okay. Sorry about that. I even have it right here, and it's unchecked on my list. Okay, so we should do that because it's easier done here. So let's decide who needs to meet. We're going to meet for nice. art. I know that. Yeah, we have. So we, we have a, a public art is already set up. In two weeks. We are we're fine. And we had talked about about having a uh, post mortem meeting for concerts in the park. Yes. Mm. Uh, and we had. I think we, had, we should uh, meet on that. I think we should meet on that. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that we were going to do was maybe start a, a draft of next year's fundraising letter. Yes. While the successes of well, this year exactly. are still fresh in our mind. Yes. And I'm also wondering, uh, you know, I, I went to a number of the events, and and uh, people did, because I'm a commissioner, they would come up and talk to me about it. There are a couple citizens who have very strong uh, thoughts and feelings about about our selection. I'm wondering, would it be valuable, these are open meetings, to invite a couple of those key people to sure. come and give us feedback? Sure. Uh, yeah. You know, David was talking earlier about, and I think this is really important, about getting feedback from the community. What is our feedback loop? Uh, and so I think on the tail of this, it might be really valuable to invite, um, I can think of three three people in particular, maybe, yes. you know, some other people to come to that meeting to give us their their feedback so we can build on what was successful and uh, and learn from what uh, what wasn't uh, so successful. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I've been I've been asked when that meeting is set to notify people who've already expressed their interest in yes. coming. No. Right. What about inviting some of your sponsors? Maybe their input because they do yeah. sponsor. Mm -hmm. Yep. And a nice uh, monetary way. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. I, I think that some of the people that are asking to be at the meeting are sponsors. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Do you want to um, look at a date right now? Yeah. We can do that. Bonnie, Teresa, and Kevin. Okay. So our next our next commission meeting is the twelfth, correct? That is right. Uh, what's what's a good day to do this? Yeah, I'm okay. It's You're up okay. to you too. Teresa. Um. Mondays okay. are good. Thursdays. Yeah. Uh, the 22nd, the 29th, the 19th, the 26th, they're all open for me. Okay. Or are we meeting on October. the 29th or the 28th? We are meeting for uh, the 28th for public. 28th, okay. You guys want to so what, to uh, what days did you say again? The 26th? Uh, 26th is fine. Can't What's that? Uh, for for what uh, day of the week? Park. Is it's it? a Monday. Okay. Twenty sixth works for me. 
and that should be it needs to be late in the day for for you right um, and also for members of the community yeah I would think after work hours like maybe six how is that for for city staff on a Monday whenever you guys do. September 26th <coughs> yes yeah but after hours how is that for Wednesday's you? better for staff yes oh. Wednesday's six. better six six you how about I have a recommendation how about the suggestion how about after the public art subcommittee meeting we're meeting from four to five or something like that what day is this that's, that's on the 29th 28th oh 28th excuse me mm -hmm. that would that would work I don't think like I have any yeah Wednesday would work okay we could do it then follow it up at 5 30 5 30 Teresa six o'clock five thirty six o'clock um I'm worried about people from the community coming. 5.30 might be a bit early if people are Six. coming from Six the work day. Maybe. It's a Wednesday. Later is fine. Okay. Except we're meeting at 4 o'clock. Okay. We could even, we can move that down. You want to move that down to 4.30? Well, we can fill it an hour Five. and a half and then I'll bring. Hang out. Hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hang out with you. <coughs> okay. Well, maybe That's we could good. throw in another subcommittee. Okay, so what's yeah, that? Line date? Them all up. What did we decide? We the 28th. decided the 28th at 6 p.m. Well, or you know, we could even meet at we, we could even meet at 5:30, write the fundraising letter, take a crack at that, or get an overview, uh, and then members of the community could could come in at six. If you'd like to, I'm okay with that. Or perhaps a little debrief first. Yeah, maybe debrief. a little debrief first. So we invite the members of the public to come at six. A strategy. We have, okay. we have a little, a little, uh, our own sort of uh, thoughts on it, and then we take some public input. Okay. So let's make it at five thirty. Okay. So and four o'clock and five thirty. Yeah, and okay. Teresa, did did you want to compare notes about members of the community and who to invite? Yeah, and I was you, your list might be the same as mine. Probably is. Okay. <laughs> But we should do that, and we should strategize about how we're going to contact them. And are we just going to contact those people, or are we going to open it up to a broader well audience? Well, after the meeting, let's let's see who who we have. Maybe they can by word of mouth. Um, but I know there's some key people who really have strong feelings about it, and mm -hmm. and they can invite some friends if they know other people. Mm -hmm. Very true. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Um, any other subcommittees that need to meet? Well, I was looking at uh, coming to that time of the year, Festival of Lights. Oh, yeah, we have to start. That's true. And isn't that this, is true. Is this an anniversary? Mm -hmm. I don't know. This year? Is Festival of Lights, or was that last year? No. I don't. Oh, we're having all these anniversaries. Is. I'm just thinking, oh, it's an anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think okay. it is, but okay. I'll double check. But we need to start. We need to meet on that. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to set a so date? So which subcommittee is Preferably that? after uh, day in the park. Festival. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it has its own. Oh, no. We're going to meet tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So afraid it was Is there another Wednesday that works? Staff-wise, that seems to be a good day. Um, That's what I was thinking. What about October 5th? October 5th, good for festival lights? Bonnie? Sure. Um, what day of the week is that? Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. How about 4.30? Okay. 4.30 work? Mm-hmm. Okay, 10, 6. Okay. And I don't think we need to meet for facilities, do we, Renee? Um, do we have anything? No, I think we're fine right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. I would like to throw out because it was on my list for the last time, and I ever it was so much other stuff going on that I don't. If you guys want to try to get a teen together and also events, and I know on the teen mm -hmm. it's just David and Teresa, so it's difficult if one can't make it, then we can't have a meeting because there's only two. So mm -hmm. if you guys think you can try to get something together for teens because I know Teresa really wants to meet on teens. I can say for myself, I, my October schedule is I'm going to be traveling almost the entire month. So I don't know when I'm available at this point. Is there another member of the commission who would like to take on another committee? 
the teens. No. Okay. I would, but I can't because I'm on school board and the same with you. Well, yeah, I was going to say I would do it, but I, I what, What's like the subcommittee? It's teen. Teen. Teen services. Teen yes. services. Remember? Teen activities. Yeah. Yeah, remember. I'll do it. I'll do yes. it. Yeah. Excellent. Sure. It's with you and David? It is. I'll do it. Thank you so much, Kevin. Yay! <laughs> that doesn't mean you're off the hook, David. <laughs> no. <laughs> so maybe Just we... after baseball playoffs are over my world. <laughs> is it something that can be done in November? Yeah, that's, I'm fine then. It's just October. I'm, I mean, is there anything pressing for that subcommittee that... that mm. Nothing pressing. It's just that, it, you know, we'd like to get YAC started again, which I'm, I'm sure Ricardo is working on. Yes. Um, we'd like, we'd just really like to... To get did the you ball want to, rolling. Did you want to meet in, in October, set a meeting which mm -hmm. David can attend or not, depending on his schedule? Did you want to go ahead and do that? Or did you want to wait till November? Is it David said he can can't. Do? October is full. Right? Yeah, I would say if, if, you, if you need me there, I, can, I can't commit to any dates in October right okay. now. If, otherwise, November is fine. Maybe just you guys could yeah, meet I as a planning a meeting. I think it would be great <clears throat> to meet in October, okay. kind of do All a right. planning meeting and kick around some ideas and see where Ricardo is with what he's working on. All right, let's find a date then. Okay. Uh, and I am gone the second half of the month, so it has to be before the next commission meeting. Okay. So first week, first week in October? First week is good for me because I'm gone the second. All right. At some point you might want to invite some teens yes. to your meeting. Well, we'll just get the ball There's rolling. We'll kind of yeah, we'll get the way, overview. We'll get the mm -hmm. overview and see yeah, what can be done. Uh, what uh, What's okay. good for you? Does October 5th work? It works October for me. October 5th works. What time? Okay. Um, <laughs> Five thirty, six o'clock. Either would be fine for me. Uh, Five thirty. Okay. See, I was just going to say, Bonnie, do you want to meet for seniors on the fifth? But you're on that one too, Clevin. Yeah. Did you? Did we need to meet? Well, I don't know. We haven't met since. Um, we could do it in November. Seems like October is pretty full. Yeah. No, let's do it in yeah. November. Okay. 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 We'll look at that next meeting. Okay, anything else? Is that it? If there's That's anything it. else that comes up, then just let us know. Okay, great. So our next meeting is October 12th, right? That is correct. At 6.30? Okay, i got to put this in here. All right, so let's move on to commissioners. Do we have anything, Bonnie? shared with us. Does anyone else have anything to share today? Nope. Mm. Okay. We'll move on to staff reports. I want to give a little bit of a report on the preschool and after school programs that have started up again. Um, the preschool had their meet and greet prior to they started on the 6th, I believe it was. And it was well attended, lots of new students and parents came and they had a little spread and the kids got to play and get to know each other. So we went up there, it was, Marcella's really great at, she's so creative. Mm -hmm. um, for someone who's not a creative person, I thrive on seeing people that can do that. And she does some really fun things with the kids and creates all kinds of different crafts and it's really neat to see. So that's going. Um, the Club Rec, um, the enrollment for Club Rec is really good right now. I researched a little bit today and found we're doing about 55, averaging 55 kids a day <coughs> in the program. I think we've probably got at least 80 signed up right now, but they don't come all the time. Um, and we are doing some new exciting, having some new exciting things um, that they're going to start doing, um, little clubs so that they're doing different kinds of activities. So Marcel is going to be teaching a Spanish class on Mondays. Um, Tony is doing, for the next couple of weeks, she's doing derby car put-together clubs where they can learn how to get their cars together. Um, they're also going to be coming up. There's going to be cooking. There will be sports clubs and art clubs. So I think each staff member find something that they want to do with the kids and they 
last I think last year they did like a soccer club and they did a I'm sorry, a music club. So they take something that they like to do and they get as many kids that want to sign up for it. And so it's just a little something, other extracurricular activity other than just the normal playing outside and arts. So that's what's going on there with the after school program. So it's kind of exciting. They're trying to change it up a little bit and make it a little more fun. Um, and then our fall sports and classes have all begun. The um, volleyball... Uh, girls volleyball and the flag football um, are going ahead. We were having a little trouble getting enough people, enough kids signed up to, we weren't sure if they were going to go, but we've got enough now. And um, I talked to Ricardo today and they've all started up and he's filling up balls left and right with air in the office. It's kind of loud, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's going really well. And then our new skateboarding classes started last Saturday. Good. Um, yeah, they're, it's full. Both sessions are full. Um, I got a call from a parent. I happened to be gone already on Friday because we leave early. And so I came in on Monday and I had this message from a parent who said, oh, you know, um, I can't remember her child's name, but he, he didn't want to do it. He changed his mind. And so she wanted to know, you know, what was the refund policy and, and you know, if I could give her a call on Monday. And so I called her on Monday, I left her a message. She called me back and left me a message and said, I hope you haven't done anything yet. She said, because my husband said, took him, took him anyway and said, you know, what? I think you should go look. And he loved it, loved the instructor, loved the whole thing. And I've only heard really good things about it. So I think the skateboarding thing is going over really well. That's great. So, yeah. So that's it pretty much. I mean, you know, in our typical normal classes, the salsa actually just started um, last week. I think they had 10 students. So we'll see how that's going to progress. Um, the new Zumba class started. It's a little low on um, students. So hopefully people will catch on to that. That's Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays up at Mission Blue. And the salsa class is Thursday nights at Mission Blue. I'll be going to salsa tomorrow night. <laughs> I couldn't go last week, but I heard lots of good feedback. Yeah. He said the instructor was amazing, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and they're a drop-in fee only for that, so <laughs> there's no... Forward to it. Yeah, so we'll see how that mm -hmm. all progresses. But I think the salsa, as long as you know people keep going, I think that one's going to go over well. So. And what is the drop-in fee? It's $13 for residents, 15 for non-residents. Yeah, I, I just had a question uh, back to the skate park classes uh are do they talk about helmets and safety things and, and and so on in that class they do they require them to wear helmets that's very good because i know that there has been in conversations in the, in the community some objection and, and conversation about about safety thing and that's a tough age to to um to address things like that because uh, uh they think that they're um invincible and so it's really good that that the parks and rec uh, uh, department is promoting a class that promotes those safety issues so that's really good to hear I have one other thing sorry in in regard to the salsa class I the the one one of the feedback areas I got was on the cost of the class and it was from a cup, you know, a couple. So there's two of them going, and that. So you've already heard this. Yes. And they were just wondering if there were there was going to be a fee breakdown if you bought the whole series just so that it would well, be such there, a chunk. There is no series purchase right now. We 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 decided I think between um, Steve, who's the coordinator of the class, and the instructor. the instructor that they wanted to just do a drop in fee. Um, so I don't know if there's a possibility that that could change going forward, but for, um, right now it's just a drop in fee. Okay. Or maybe, you know, a two for one special if it's a couple from the same household or yeah, that some would be way something, to break it down. Yeah. That would be something the instructor would want to bring back to Steve if they wanted to do something different. That's usually their call as to how they want to initiate their payment. So, um, and I do know that I thought you were going to bring up there was an issue with the flyer that had the wrong price on it. So when oh. people came, they were 
getting a different I didn't hear price. About that. Yeah, but it's fine now. Everything's been taken care of. So okay. it was just they had put the wrong information on their flyer. So it's okay. that's fine. But yeah, I think that's something that in, if enough people maybe went to him and said, hey, we'd like to do some type of a package, you know, maybe he can come back to Steve and say, now we want to do a package. So okay. that would be up to him. Okay. And I have a question about um, just summer camp in general, summer programs, and how successful they were, how were they well attended. We had some new ones. We had Minecraft, and we have Shakespeare ongoing. And I just was curious to know, uh, how did they feel? Did, was there a lot of participation? They didn't. <laughs> they didn't. Um, the Minecraft did not? Minecraft did not go. Oh. The Lego did go, the regular Lego. Yeah, I was really surprised. Um, we didn't get a lot of... Um, participation in our sports camps this year we basically the only one we did not cancel was the basketball and the lego everything else got canceled due to low wow. participation yeah low registration the regular camp did well they there were several weeks that were full because of the trips and stuff that they go on but the sports camps did not do well this year that is very interesting because I had a lot of parents asking me specifically about the sports camps and Minecraft. And it was really the yeah. motivation and the, the desire of the parents who yes. practically wrote a petition yeah. for that camp. Yep. It's really surprising. And I know you did a lot of legwork to reach out to them yeah. and get their contact information. Yes. And we sent them the information uh -huh. so that they had it and encouraged yeah. them to register. Wow. And it just that is very it didn't happen. And it's Shakespeare was canceled too? Yeah, I think there was only. I think that was only a, a couple. There was right? only a couple. Of, yeah, of, shame. Yeah, and they even were willing to offer um, free spots, scholarship. Wow, you know, up to three, I think, free scholarship wow. spaces, mm -hmm. and we couldn't. We did not. Get oh my interest. goodness, that's interesting. What a shame. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. That is funny about Minecraft because up at the after school Lipman, yeah, we we had that as one of the clubs. And it, you know, I think it even had a waiting list. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's a matter of scheduling. Maybe over the summer when families are going away, it's a bit more difficult if it were offered after school, mm -hmm. you know, where a lot of kids are going to stay anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I That's think true. sometimes yeah. the summer um, program, not so much the camps, but the sports camps for whatever reason, they are hit and miss. It, it, I think this year we moved them around where they're not in the same week as they were last year so maybe the soccer was the last week last year and then this week it was the first week and I don't know why that would make a difference but a lot of times people go on vacations toward the end of the summer so some of that but the Minecraft was somewhere near the beginning few weeks of summer so I, I was really disappointed because mm -hmm. I thought that was just like the big everybody talked about Minecraft I know. and it didn't go yeah, very surprised wow interesting Okay, so do you think we would offer those programs next year and see if we could get any interest, or would we just not and move on to something else? We do them every not? year, as long as, I mean, I've only been here a couple of years, but I know they Steve, feel... we do the, the same sports camps every year. And, mm -hmm. and last summer, previous to this summer, I think we only ended up canceling like two. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know where the difference is. I don't know what the change was. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's other more interesting things. There's... So much soccer going mm -hmm. on. <laughs> True. For 12 months out of the year, that, that's the big thing now, and everybody mm -hmm. just wants to go play soccer, and it just interferes with a lot of the other stuff. So mm -hmm. I think based on this summer's response, too, with the enrichment camps, I think it would be really valuable to be something that we include in the community survey Yes. so that we can have more successful programming so with too. more engaged residents and make sure that we're not spinning our wheels providing programming that the community doesn't want and won't participate in mm -hmm. so i'm happy to fold that into the larger community survey so that we can kind of have some more substantial programming that would be great mm -hmm. it would be interesting to, to know um, what feedback and what their ideas are so mm -hmm. through the chair where where were you going to have minecraft in the summer where was that going to be located at cafeteria yeah usually the same place we have the lego which is the bes cafeteria so where were you going to get the computers? The, con the contractor. Oh, he was bringing was the computers. To provide oh, them. okay. Yes. I see. Okay. Hmm. I, I don't know what Minecraft is. It's a coding 
oh, okay. type of program. I well, didn't kids know. learn coding. Tech. Yeah. I'm missing something because I have no idea what it is. <laughs> <You're not laughs> <listening. laughs> All right. Anything else from programs? Thank I, you very much. I just had a couple it. other updates okay, to share great. with the commission. Um, I wanted to let you know where we are on in terms of progress of the Mission Blue upgrades. Oh, yeah. So we have paint and patchwork that's being done up there now, and it's looking, the walls are looking beautiful. Um, a couple weeks ago, we had changing tables delivered and installed mm -hmm. in both of the restrooms, so that's exciting. Okay. And um, all the uh, brand new chairs were delivered on Monday this week. <laughs> so the new <laughs> chairs are there. <laughs> you had a ribbon cutting. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, two other upgrades we anticipate in the next two weeks include the replacement of the, the um, refrigerator in the kitchen Great. as well as the stove. Mm -hmm. So that will happen in the coming weeks. And then we are going to replace the carpet after the 55th anniversary mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. So lots happening up at Mission Blue and it's Get looking beautiful. Those last spills <laughs> in. <laughs> when is it? It can go crazy. October 1st. October 1st. Yes. Okay, excellent. Oh, wow. We'll I gotta put that in my there. calendar. Yes. 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 <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, That's wonderful. I can't wait to see. Yeah. And then we had our first dive-in movie at the pool last oh, yeah. weekend. Um, we co-sponsored with the library, and there were about 45 participants. Good. People both in the pool and on deck watching the movie on a big inflatable screen. And Good. so we thought we were happy with the turnout being the first time that we hosted that event. Yeah. And our next one is coming up in October. Um, I was out there with my son, and it was a little bit chilly. So mm -hmm. we're going to have free hot chocolate at the next one because <laughs> it'll likely be colder in the middle of October. But um, the movie is Zootopia for October. Yes, we did Inside Out last weekend. Good. And then just a slew of other upcoming events for the department. Bonnie shared that we have Lagoon Cleanup on Saturday. And then we have the Day in the Park and Derby on the 24th. The 55th anniversary party is on October 1st. Our underwater pumpkin patch is on October 8th, and then the, the second dive-in movie is on October 15th. So um, yeah. lots of park and rec events to right. keep people excited about what's going so on. So the underwater pumpkin patch, is that um, together with the lions? Theirs is later in the month. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So this will be a park and rec. Yes. Aquatic pumpkin patch. That's correct. Excellent. That sounds like fun. And they'll have games and activities. For oh, okay, kids too. so it's like a little yeah mini so festival. It's, yes, dive for your pumpkin, kind of like the the pumpkins will be in the pool, but they fog for your apple. Yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> dive for your pumpkin. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are wrapping it up here. Um, written communications. Does anyone have anything mm -hmm. no. from community? Nothing. No. Commission calendar. So um, kind of went over, I guess we can talk about what we can put on the agenda for next meeting. So the November meeting is when we're going to talk about the uh, 280 sales proceeds and recommendation for that. Does anyone have anything for the November, the next meeting other than that? No, no, this is October meeting. So the October meeting, October 12th meeting. Hopefully follow agenda. up one day in the park. Okay. And, and the lagoon cleanup. Yeah, the, the lagoon cleanup. Um, the reports, okay. Park policy cleanup. Park cleanup policy. Yeah. Is gonna park, put oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So Don't forget to put in those party props. <laughs> <laughs> People will be asking you what those are. That in there. Yeah. Uh, anything else? I think that's all. Okay, good. We were going to yeah. save the... 280 sales proceeds meeting for November. November, second. November. Yes. right. Mm -hmm. And also the the uh, skate naming process. <laughs> November, the the skate skate park oh, naming yes. process would be skate in November. As well. Yeah, because that's going to City Council right. uh, in October. October. Okay, good. That's true. Okay, thanks for that. So those two are November. Yeah, we all need to go to that. Okay, great. All right, everyone. That is it. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Sure.